Welcome to the Botsford Wellness Minute, a series to discuss healthy living topics in your community. I'm your host, Mandy Hartke. We've heard a lot about the importance of strong, healthy bones. Today we're going to discuss osteoporosis, what it is, why you should be concerned, how to treat it, and also how to prevent it in the first place. We'll be speaking with three Botsford Hospital experts about how to keep our bones healthy. Dr. Seikert will be discussing risk factors and also how to prevent osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, or porous bone, is a condition in which the bones become weak and can break even from a minor fall or occasionally from a simple sneeze. We'll see patients trip on the ice, uh, trip on a telephone cord in their home, and a resultant fracture can occur. In the United States, it currently affects 10 million people in which 80% are women, 20% are men. We estimate about 34 million patients will have low bone mass that could eventually lead to osteoporosis. One in two women and one in four men will have an osteoporotic fracture in their lifetime. Mostly these fractures will occur in the hip, spine, and wrists, but any bone can be affected. One of the more fearful things that I think about are that an average of 25% of hip fracture patients over the age of 50 may die in the first year following their fracture. One in five people who were previously ambulatory prior to their hip fracture may require long-term care after the fracture. First, I would be concerned about uh, risk factors in females mostly around the age of 30 when their bone mass stops increasing. Then at menopause, there's an acceleration of bone loss that occurs, and typically this will occur within the first few years when menopause begins. Risk factors include being a female, being of older age, having a family history of osteoporosis, having a prior fracture, having low sex hormones that can occur uh, in a male, which we refer to as hypogonadism, having low testosterone level, or in the postmenopausal state when estrogen levels decline. Additionally, we would be concerned about those that have poor nutritional intake and possibly low calcium or vitamin D intake, having an inactive lifestyle, alcohol abuse, or uh, smoking, and certain medications like steroids and anticonvulsants. The best screening tests for osteoporosis can be conducted in physicians' offices as well as hospital environments. The test is referred to as a DEXA scan. It's a quick diagnostic study uh, that has a very uh, low um, radiation exposure. This test evaluates bone mineral density uh, as bone mineral density is an important determinant of fracture risk and aids in guiding treatment plans. Multiple medications are now available that can be utilized on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, and we even have a new medication on the market that's an intravenous infusion that takes 15 minutes that is being done annually. The medications are well tolerated and promising in the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis by slowing bone mass and in increasing bone mineral density. The goal is ultimately to stop the bone loss, rebuild bone, and reduce the risk of fractures. To prevent osteoporosis, like muscles, bone becomes stronger with weight-bearing exercises as in walking and jogging, quitting smoking, limiting alcohol, and good nutrition with consumption of calcium and vitamin D products is of utmost importance. Calcium can be consumed from milk, yogurt, cheeses, dark green leafy vegetables, almonds, and tofu and orange juice that's fortified with calcium. As for vitamin D, Sunlight causes your body to make vitamin D. We can also get vitamin D from salmon, tuna, herring, and milk that's fortified with vitamin D. Supplementation with calcium and vitamin D are widely available in the form of calcium carbonate and calcium citrate. You and your doctor should consider getting your first bone density test at the early onset of menopause and in men over the age of 70. This is a Medicare benefit for those specific situations. Being compliant with your preventative and treatment plan is most important for your bone health. 
Next up is Annie House, our registered dietitian, who's going to discuss how our nutrition plays into strong and healthy bones. Calcium is important in the structure of bone. It helps with bone rigidity, bone hardness, bone strength. It's important for children while their bones are growing. It's also important in adults because every year we're having 20% of our bone is being replaced and reabsorbed. So, and that actually accelerates after the age of 35. Usually we're actually not gain or we're losing more bone than our bone strength than we're gaining. Um, and then after menopause for women, this actually accelerates even more. Um, so it's really important for um, women over the age of 50 or after menopause to be um, having a lot of calcium. And then vitamin D helps with the absorption of calcium, um, regulates the calcium in our, our bloodstream as well. Um, and it actually helps with uh, the um, deposition of that calcium in our bones. Dairy sources are really the best um, food sources for calcium in the diet. So whether it's cheese or milk, or uh, yogurt, those are all going to be good sources of calcium. And then it's not in the fat portion, so if you're drinking skim milk instead of whole milk, you're still gonna be getting the vitamin D, which is, or excuse me, the calcium, which is essential. And then um, those dairy products are usually fortified in vitamin D, since vitamin D really isn't found in a lot of food sources naturally. So if you have breakfast cereals, or even orange juices sometimes are fortified in vitamin D, and then all of the milk supply that's sold in the U.S. is fortified with that vitamin D as well. Other sources could be in green leafy vegetables. Um, you can also find calcium in uh, fish, especially fish that's canned like salmon or uh, sardines. <clears throat> and uh, vitamin D, you'd find that in fish or fish liver oils as well. Humans can make vitamin D if they have exposure to sunlight. Um, some experts recommend 15 minutes in the sun without having any kind of sunscreen on. Um, but remember that UV rays are harmful to the skin for prolonged exposure, so you do want to be careful, and it is important to wear sunscreen. And finally, Cliff Ewald, our exercise physiologist and personal trainer, will be showing us some exercises to help build bone density. As a personal trainer, when I work with individuals that have osteoporosis, it's really important that they um, participate in a well-rounded exercise program. At menopause, um, when women lose their bone mineral density due to loss of estrogen, they also lose the cardiovascular disease prevention benefits of estrogen. So an aerobic exercise program is really important just as much as the resistance training. With your aerobic exercise, um, Weight-bearing activity is really appropriate um, so that we're kind of loading and stressing the bones. So that would be walking or hiking, that would be great ac activity. Um, biking or swimming is good for your cardiovascular system, but you're not loading the bones. So um, cardiovascular activity is important to combine then with your res resistance training. With resistance training, it's really important to work the full body. We want to work 8 to 12 different exercises. Uh, four or five lower body and four or five upper body exercises and you also have to include the core. Um, posture is really important and core support is really important for the low back. Um, some exercises that we want to avoid with osteoporosis would be any forward bending at the waist and twisting. Those could be problematic um, through the spinal cord and the low back area. But loading the bone both from resistance training and weight bearing are going to help in terms of osteoporosis. A lot of the bone breaks and fractures that occur in osteoporosis occur from falls. So balance training is really important and flexibility is really important. Simple exercises like standing on one leg, uh, working on stability balls, those all will help increase your balance. In terms of flexibility, um, a lot of low back problems can occur from um, tightness in the hamstrings and other muscles around the hip. So a good, well-rounded flexibility program is also really important for fall prevention and also just overall fitness. Okay, Greg, so this exercise is a great overall exercise for your arms and your low back and your balance, okay? We're using bands in this case. You can also use free weights. You can use machines. Okay, what I want you to do is start with maintain good posture, 
Pull in your abdominals and keep your shoulders up nice and proud. There you go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a breath in and then blow out and pull the bands towards you. Very good. Nice, slow and controlled motion. We're also working your balance because we're on the stability ball. He's got his feet spread apart so he's nice and stable. We're working our balance. Low back posture is very good and you can see we're working a lot of the arms and the upper back. Okay, one more of those and now I want you to alternate with the arms. This challenges your balance a little bit more because it's pulling from one side and then releasing the on the other and you have to sort of stabilize in through the hips. Good job. Another good multi-joint exercise is called the shoulder press. It's going to primarily work the shoulders and the upper back, but because we're on a stability ball, it's also going to help stabilize his core muscles and his low back muscles. So Greg, what I'm going to have you do is go out and get to that starting position. Good. He's kind of making a T here, and we're going to go ahead and press the weight up as we blow out, and we're going to finish with a soft elbow so he doesn't quite lock that elbow out at the top. Nice, slow and controlled motion, and blow out, and breathe in. Also, he's keeping his abdominals nice and tight so his core posture is correct. He's good and he's balanced on the ball. Just by alternating one arm at a time, that's going to challenge the balance a little bit more. Let's go ahead and try that. Good. Okay, as one's going up, the other one's going down. Good. And here he's challenged a little bit more in terms of his balance, so we're working and recruiting a few more core muscles. Thank you to Dr. Seikert, Annie, and Cliff for that helpful information. Remember, some bone loss is natural as we age, but osteoporosis is not a natural part of aging and can be prevented. Please see our website for more helpful tips. And thank you for joining us today on the Botsford Wellness Minute. I'm Mandy Hartke, and I hope you have a healthy day.